Well, so we're looking at, look, fundamentally, uh, a tough world economically, but there's always opportunity, and that's what we want to talk about. But where do you see opportunity in a tough environment like this? Well, we like some consumer stocks, uh, and that in some ways are headquartered in, in uh, uh, challenging countries. Uh, as an example is Inditex, the Spanish retailer that we know as Zara in this country, uh, or Luxottica that makes eyeglass frames and runs Sunglass Hut and uh, uh, Lens Crafters. Uh, they do, both of them do a, lot, a fair amount of business in this country. They're a lot based of, in Italy. They're, well, Luxottica is based in Italy, Inditex is based in Spain. I mean, they're two bad places places in a sense, but uh, uh, we think they're great companies uh, in doing the right business. And a lot of it is not in those countries. Where exactly. A very, very small portion is in their home market, uh, yeah. relatively. Right. Uh, so that's good. Jim, you haven't liked China on principle going back to the beginning. What, uh, what international markets do you like? One of our favorite stocks is uh, Hellenic Bottling, which is the Coke bottler that covers uh, Eastern Europe. That's kind of our backdoor way of... of Wait a minute. What? Hellenic means Greek. Greek, that's right. And they're based in Athens. <laughs> but you still like them. But well, we still like them. And they only do 70% or 7% of their business in Greece. The rest of it's everywhere from Italy to Moscow. Uh, and as standard of living rises in Eastern Europe, uh, they're going to drink more Coke, we hope. Uh, Rich, for starters, you are a big picture allocation guy. So right. before we get to names, I want to know your views on big picture asset allocation. Well, I, I will tell you, Jeff, uh, defensive strategies are not cheap. They're very popular, but there are still uh, uh, plenty of opportunities in dividend yielding stocks. And there's nothing that says that they won't get more expensive. I think they may well get more expensive. But I think if you really want to play the leadership change, the place to look is in U.S. small cap stocks. If you think about what you said about the consensus, what's going on around the world, the last 10 years have been a period where the United States has lagged and lagged dramatically. It may well be, if we're correct in our view, that credit bubbles around the world are going to deflate, the United States is where you want to be. And Bob mentioned this very briefly, where he said you want companies that are exposed to the United States. So in our view, you can't get more exposed to the United States than buying U.S. small cap companies. We actually think that's going to be a huge story. It has a lot of the properties right now that commodities and energy and emerging markets had 10 or 11 years ago. I think if we do this for them in 10 years, people are going to be talking all about small cap stocks. So you must also think that they are overlooked and underpriced. They, well, it's hard to say that they're cheap. I'm not going to tell you they're cheap because if you look at the gr small cap growth universe, it's rare the small cap growth universe is actually cheap. But uh, in terms of ownership, yes. I mean, I think they're decidedly underowned. Got any in particular? No, I don't have any names for it because, we're, again, we're a top-down firm. We don't, we don't look at individual stocks. But, but I would say one of the places we've started to look at, and I think this will surprise people, is small cap banks because the larger financial institutions are caught up in this whole credit bubble and the global credit bubble. They still have huge exposure. Again, if you want to expose yourself to the United States, how do you get that in the financial sector? It's through the smallest banks you can find in the United States. Have to be careful, of course, but uh, it's one place we're starting to look. 